Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. A modern secured transactions framework to enable businesses to have increased access to finance. The Ministry of Education completes remedial works at the Sir Iris Simmons, Bocash and Antropo Secondary Schools. Invest St. Lucia embarks on a land rationalization plan. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council has partnered with the International Finance Corporation, a member of the World Bank Group, with support from the Government of Canada, to develop a modern secured transactions framework to enable increased access to finance for small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, using movable assets as collateral. Research indicates that approximately 70% of a firm's wealth is concentrated in its movable assets such as equipment, inventory, and accounts receivables. In a bid to improve access to finance for small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, and St. Lucia's ease of doing business ranking, the government of St. Lucia is moving to introduce legislation under the Security Interest in Movable Property Bill. Access to finance has been a long-standing issue for the private sector, particularly SMEs. Last week, representatives from the banking, finance and legal sectors, so alongside government officials, participated in a two-day workshop on secured transactions and collateral registry. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Finance, Cointia Thomas, highlighted that the lack of access to finance inhibits the firm's competitiveness and productivity, its ability to expand its operations and provide much-needed employment. This is important as 70% of firms' wealth is said to be concentrated in the movable assets. To support this initiative, a legal framework and a registry system will be put in place for providing credit using movable assets. The International Finance Corporation works with governments across the globe to develop frameworks that allow borrowers to obtain loans by using their collateral resources to help create new alternatives for SMEs to obtain financing. Elaine McEachern is the Senior Financial Sector Specialist with the IFC. Approximately 57% of the firms in St. Lucia um, have access to finance challenges. Only 24.5% of those firms um, have a bank loan or a line of credit, and 98% of those loans to small and medium-sized firms re require collateral over 1.9 times the loan amount. St. Lucia is currently ranked 161 out of 189 economies on the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Getting Credit Indicator. However, this ranking is expected to improve with the passage of this new legislation. Once the Security Interest in Movable Property Bill is tabled and approved by Parliament, the design and the development of the collateral registry will be the next step in creating the enabling infrastructure to increase access to credit for SMEs. Partner at Grant Thornton, Richard Pitterking, said though this piece of legislation is very technical and many persons may not initially grasp the concept, it can increase access to credit for SMEs. I think many instances uh, there are bits and pieces of legislation that we still need as well. One of them is the Insolvency Act, which again we, we have a bill, um, but it's not being passed in, in, and without that, um, the, the lenders are not really going to get into lending to, to movable assets. So we need a number of things that have to change um, over the next year or so in order to open up uh, our markets to a lot of new types of products um, that will allow transactions to flow and finance to be available to those who traditionally have a problem getting it. Business Development Officer at Axel Finance, Mervyn Aegis, said this bill aligns with his company's model of credit financing. It is, of course, heartening to see that everything is coming into place um, through legislation and, of course, institutionalization. Uh, so Axel Finance will definitely uh, continue in the path that it has been uh, to ensure that uh, our small businesses continue to grow uh, through the use of movable assets to secure their financial stability. Irvin Springer, Business Development Manager at First National Bank, indicated that the passage of this bill will go hand in hand with a new initiative his bank is pursuing. We're actually going to be launching a SME Competency Center in the coming weeks, um, which will be providing products and financial services to the SME sector. So the Secure Transaction Bill now being passed will actually enhance this effort. 
The IFC is hopeful that other member countries in the currency union will be motivated by St. Lucia's advances and consider making this solution a regional one. The, the two-day workshop was held at the Finance Administrative Center, November 5th to 6th, 2019. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness is advising the public, more specifically pregnant women, about the importance of serology testing during pregnancy. Serology testing involves taking a blood sample to test for HIV, syphilis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HTLV 1 and 2. All pregnant women must have serology testing done twice during pregnancy, within the first three months and within the last three months. Senior Medical Officer for Infectious Diseases, Dr. Gail Kujada, says pregnant women can get these tests free of charge at the Ezra Long Laboratory at Victoria Hospital. Testing ensures early diagnosis and treatment of the affected mother where necessary. Testing can also ensure that the affected mother can inform their partner so that they can be tested and treated as well. Early diagnosis and treatment reduce the chances of the baby getting HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis B while in utero, that is, while in mommy's womb. Early diagnosis and treatment reduce the chances of baby dying while in mommy's womb from any of these diseases. Early diagnosis and treatment reduce the chances of the baby dying from any of those diseases after birth. Dr. Gujada says that the goal is to have healthy mothers and healthy babies. Any mother who does these tests for HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, syphilis, and HDLV 1 and 2 are exempt from paying any fee for those tests at the Ezra Long Laboratory at Victoria Hospital. What this means is that all those tests are free for pregnant mothers. And that was Senior Medical Officer for Infectious Diseases, Dr. Gail Gajada. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has informed parents and guardians of students attending the Bocas, Antipo and Sir Iris Simmons Secondary Schools that the necessary post assessments and tests have concluded and that the schools have been confirmed safe for occupancy. As such, classes at these institutions will resume on Thursday, November 14, 2019. Parents and guardians are meantime asked to note that the schools are putting in all necessary measures to make up for their instructional time lost. The Ministry thanks all parties for their understanding and patience during the period of remediation. The Caribbean Secondary School Drama Festival ended here to rousing applause. Anissi Antoine has the details. The Caribbean Secondary School Drama Festival held a seminar for St. Lucian teachers and teachers of the visiting contingent on UNICEF rights of the child in performing arts education. The initiative forms part of a collaboration between the Caribbean Secondary School Drama Festival and UNICEF to commemorate World Children's Day. Kentilia Louis, coordinator of the Caribbean Secondary School Drama Festival, stated that the purpose of the seminar was to discuss and formulate guidelines to enforce the rights of a child in the drama sector. Miss Louis deemed the drama festival a success in all aspects. I am very happy with um, the festival and in terms of the responses I'm getting from it. Um, there are persons who, have, who came for one day and have come every day because they are surprised as to what the children can produce and I've been saying that because for the longest while, not because they are children, doesn't, it doesn't mean that they can't produce wonderful you know, performances and so persons are seeing that. I see the students getting to know each other, um, what doesn't mean anything right now, they're all friends, they're, they all understand they're part of a tradition together, it doesn't matter where they come from. And of course for our St. Lucian students and teachers, it gives them an idea as to where they are placed regionally in terms of arts education, in terms of performance and um, has given them some ideas as to what they can do to further develop themselves. Sophia Edwards Gabriel, who is the Curriculum Officer for Health and Family Life, made a presentation on UNICEF rights of the child in performing arts education. 
We are now almost at the mark, the 30th year mark of the Convention of the Rights of the Child, and we realize that many persons are still unaware about what this treaty entails, the importance of the treaty, the articles that are in there. Most people understand that there's a concept about the rights of the child, but they don't have much detail. And given that we are now celebrating this whole week of creativity, the Caribbean Secondary Schools Festival, I felt it was a great platform to advocate and to sensitize persons about the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Edwards Gabriel emphasized on the rights of a child to express his or her views freely and engage in cultural activities. If we looked at some of the productions that were put on this week, we realized many of them spoke to culture. We saw ideas of the masquerade culture. We saw our folklore and our folk tales coming through with the Jab Jab, with the Dwen, with Obia, with religion. Children have a right to a religion, a right to an identity, a nationality, and they're here representing their countries, putting on their performances, sharing part of the culture. And so that in itself speaks directly directly to the idea that we need to engage children, we need to empower them, and we need to recognize these rights. The Caribbean Secondary Schools Drama Festival commenced on November 3rd and culminated on November 9th, 2019 at the National Cultural Center. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. Castries Comprehensive Secondary School and St. Joseph's Convent retain their respective titles as the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, in collaboration with the National Table Tennis Association, held the Inter-Secondary Schools Table Tennis Championships recently. The girls' final saw St. Joseph's Convent A winning three love over their B team. St. Joseph's Convent A, Zalian Anthony defeated Convent B, Nige Myers, 11-3, 11-5, while Convent A, Joelle St. Clair, defeating St. Joseph's Convent B, Lenore Ajuda, 9-11, 11-9, 11-7. Zalian Anthony then made it three love when she defeated Lenore, 11-7, 11-12. The boys' final saw Castries Comprehensive Secondary School winning three love against the current secondary school. Castries Comprehensive's Deandre Cauldron defeating Corinth's Snell Bernard, 11-5, 11-1. Castries Comprehensive's Ismail Moise defeating Ronaldo St. Gis, 11-2, 11-5. Shannon Janke taking it home for the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School when he defeated Kerval Snack from the current secondary, 11-6, 11-5. Table tennis action at the secondary school level continues on Thursday at the Bosio Indoor Facility from 10 a.m. Boys and girls open singles, mixed doubles, and boys and girls doubles will take center stage. Minister responsible for youth development and sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, says the recent donation of a vehicle to champion female high jumper Laverne Spencer was but just a small token of appreciation being shown by the government and people of St. Lucia for many years of dedicated service and promotion of St. Lucia due to her success in athletics. Minister Estefan made the remarks recently during the handing over of the vehicle. Every young St. Lucian must follow your example of dedication in representing, con in representing our country 
and persevering in doing so. Today, the government of St. Lucia, in partnership with a long-standing corporate citizen in the name of Northwest Limited, makes this presentation to you. In appreciation for your endurance, your athletic accomplishments, and the humility you have displayed throughout. The government of St. Lucia wishes to thank Northwest Limited for coming forth and following the very example of the person we are honoring and rewarding today. The Youth Development and Sports Minister urged other St. Lucian sportsmen and women to follow Spencer's example of determination and dedication. Some news now on Big 8 Netball. St. Joseph's Convent defeated Miku Secondary 47-36 for St. Joseph's Convent. Brittany Desiree scored 23 from 36 attempts. Gracie Alcide scored 24 from 34 attempts. For Miku Secondary, goal shoot Simaj Marguerite scored 27 from 38 attempts. And goal attack Jeremy Sonson scored 9 from 10 attempts. Quarter time scores all in favor of St. Joseph's Convent. And in the finals, Sir Arthur Lewis defeated Sufre Comprehensive 46 to 27. For Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, goal shoot Melanie Antoine scored 32 from 39 attempts. Goal attack Melika Destang scored 14 from 17 attempts. For Sufre Comprehensive, goal shoot Trichelle Didier scoring 11 from 16 attempts. And goal attack Tansy Pascal 16 from 19 attempts. And that's where we come to the end of our update from Youth Development and Sports for today. Thanks, Ryan. Invest St. Lucia is embarking on a land rationalization plan, which according to ISL's Chief Executive Officer, Roderick Cherry, is in the advanced stages. He explained that assessments have pointed to areas where individuals have been squatting on lands for decades. What we try to do is to put in as the utilities, the roads, um, electricity, water, and give the people who are there already, depending on the length of time they are there, um, preferential um, uh, rates for the land. Um, uh, we have a formula that we, that, we, that we work with, depending on the length of time that you're on the land, you get um, a, a rate for those lands, um, uh, which is lower than what the, what the market rate is, or our going rate, because our rates are not market rates, they are below market rate. The issue of squatting, according to the CEO, has existed for several decades. Cherry highlighted ISL's aim to ensure that every St. Lucian is able to afford and own a piece of land. He explained that priority will be given to those who have been inhabiting the lands for lengthy periods of time at very accessible rates. This is a legacy issue. This, uh, this I mean, the, the squatting on what is now in West St. Lucia lands, that existed 40, 50 years ago. So we have come in and the land has been vested to, to us in West St. Lucia. It is only right that if people have been occupying lands um, for, a, for a long time, that they should have be, you know, be given first title to those lands. The CEO explained the process when deciding upon a fair price for both ISL and squatters. Before we decide on the price structure, there are two different things that we do. Um, uh, we, we examine the market, the market rate for lands in the area. And um, uh, in the areas where we do land rationalization, we also do um, uh, um, some, we also do some what is social surveys to indicate to us the amount that the people who actually occupy those lands how much they, they can pay. Um, so based on that, we would look at the cost of the infrastructure, um, uh, the return that we could make. In a lot of this, in when it comes to land rationalization, we do not expect a return, but at least we want to we want to break even. And that was CEO of Invest in Lucia, Roderick Cherry. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquail. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. 
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Al Quayor. Monsieur Madame, the Vatmark University Consability, where formation and government secrecy, the GIS, as well as the Television National PIA NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle Al Quayor. Visit Primus Hutchinson. Premier Minister Setlisi Onewab Alan Shasni had received the 12th conference of the Affairs Citoyen Global Mekwidi le 12 November in Londres. Premier Minister Shasni had concerned the program of investment of the Citoyen and the sector touristic and business propriété in the pays. Premier Minister Latte also participated in a discussion concerning the investment of the Citoyen. And parmi l'autre, the Premier Minister Kide participated, c'était Onewab Dr. Joseph Muscat for Malta. Dusko Makovic, Premier Minister de Montenegro, Premier Minister Albania, Eddie Rama, and Premier Minister Atig Onimab Gaston Brown. Sa si yon se pli go konfans a la tea, ek plis ke 450 moun a tout diferent degwe business ek le pli go ofisye a gouvernman te asiste. Chef program des affaires investments se tlisi Nestor Alfred osi asiste konfans la et qu'on s'y participe dans une discussion à sa vision au Caraïbe là. Dis-moi, après ça, c'est le Premier ministre là, c'est le Premier ministre Chassene, ministre des Affaires et Développement Économique, on y va, Guy Joseph, pour former en position au Premier ministre. Le ministre de l'Agricole établit un programme de certification pour aider les cultivateurs à développer une meilleure production avec la place pour produire. Le gouvernement, c'est le CSM et le gouvernement de Taïwan, organisé un entraînement cela, et tenir une petite semaine après pour le match et le finissement du programme, là, en effort pour renforcer la production et la distribution, effectivement, oui, et le régime à cette ci L'objectif, là, c'est de se faire ce que le développeur est plus capable de produire et d'improuver à sa façon pour ménager la place pour produire, pour réduire à sa quantité qui peut y avoir dépensé, mais qui acheter pour acheter fruits à ce autre pays. Assistant directeur au ministère des Affaires agricoles, Barry Innocent, déclare que cette ci a dépensé plus de 4 millions de dollars pour acheter des produits légumes et l'autre fruit à l'autre pays. Il fait un rappel pour ces cultivateurs où il y a une signification qui a joué à développement de ça. Ça sert à développement économique du pays. Il y a un à son importance de la sécurité de manger et de manière ça important pour la terre à présent. Et faire ce cultivateur à sa manière de sa improuver à cette situation. -là. Mario Chang, Hod, monsieur des pays Taïwan, qui travaille et puis ce cultivateur -là, pour servir une technologie qui est bien avancée pour augmenter la production agricole à cette ci Cultivateur a de la face à la Cameron Augustine, qui est pour tout coopérer ensemble parce que c'est seule manière de sa ici pour faire le gouvernement de Taïwan une bonne croyance à habiliter ce cultivateur -là. Pour l'autre trois ans, le projet a été produit fruits comme tomates, azanana, trois pommes, et parmi plusieurs autres. En continuation, la conversation, nous, aujourd'hui, et puis le ministre qui nous a responsabilité pour la transformation sociale, on est là, 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 tout, il place attention à ce projet qui est financé par la Banque de Développement Caribe, la CDB. Le ministre m'a tout parlé des institutions pour les enfants qui ont bâti en diverses communes dans cette ci et parmi plusieurs autres projets. L'année à l'école pour Timamai, qu'on a pris school, qu'a fait dans mon chi, y en a Miku, y en a Jackmel. Ça c'est pour aider maman qui n'est pas travail, qui n'est Timamai, qui passe à payer l'école privée pour ces mamans ça là. Y a quoi ça ni facilité ça pour quitter les mamans. Nous n'y ont des projets pour de l'eau. Parce que vous avez vu que les primaires sont là, ils ont des communes en c'est juste aujourd'hui qu'ils ne peuvent pas de l'eau. Avec l'année, ils ont une patience qu'a fait, nous n'avons qui à peu près tout de suite qu'a commencé en vieux circuit. Avec, à la façon en constitution de Gozile, oui, avec, nous avons parlé de la bonne côté, avant 10 ans qui passaient, nous avons un projet de l'eau là. Mais Jean, en mettant la bonne, avec à, à la direction de faire je de l'eau mais gens qui ont été à cause de approcher la bonne il n'y a pas de connexion si on a un carwatt qui en ces places là qui n'est pour rien connecter et que ça c'est deuxième phase pour j'ai nous j'ai commencé tant pour bonne l'autre année non tant pour décembre l'année ça là pour j'ai ça qui est complète 
So, en chai, bagay ka fet pou wede moun, um, nou ka wede, nou ka wede uh, SSDF la moun ki pasa feme pou bati anti kai pou yo ek fami yo, avec gouvernement ka peye pou sa. Komezasyon sa la, epi Ministre des Afe et Transformation Social, ka y kontoune asyon lot nouvel. Ek se kon sa nou atou bout nouvel la, mou ka remesye ou tan, mou ka gade, mou ka bon yon invitasyon pou jen depi mou yon konsidye, konsepe la vi, pen ga y pou sa tou lot nouvel. A kwe yon la preza, mou ka vi yon pou sa tou niche. Merci au Pil Primus, and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy skies occasionally becoming cloudy with some scattered showers, mainly over the southern part of our region. For the north, it will be generally fair. Moisture and instability in the lower atmosphere will cause some showery periods, mainly over the southern eastern Caribbean region during the next 24 hours. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.43 p.m. and will be low again at 10.27 p.m. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 4.50 p.m. and will be low again at 11.54 p.m. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.03 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.